Welcome to Insight, today produced in collaboration with KCOS 13, El Paso Public Television. Today we are chatting with Maggie Morales Moody, president of Gigi's Playhouse El Paso. Maggie has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Maggie, for joining us today. Well, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm so happy to be here. So your organization provides services to children, youth, adults with Down syndrome. Talk about the challenges of, of providing those services to people of such a broad uh, variety of ages. Well, the challenge is not so much providing the services, it's more changing that, that perception that is out in the community about children with Down syndrome, because oftentimes um, we see their diagnosis and we limit them. And so our challenge at Gigi is just to change those perceptions. And we do, we do that through our educational and therapeutic programs. So the children come and they, it's not, they don't stay at the center. They come and they um, sign up for the programs that they're interested in. All of our programs are, like I said, either educational or therapeutic. And so they're all aimed at helping the children develop specific skills, whether it's motor skills, whether it's speech and language, but they're, each one is geared to helping the children develop the skills um, as much as possible so that from there they can go back into the community. We don't keep them to ourselves. They're way too beautiful to do that. So they come to the Playhouse. We develop, help develop those skills, and then they're better able to be integrated into our community. And the goal is eventually just to be able to hold a job and to live independently, which we know most of them are capable of doing. When do the services start? At what age of the child? At, at, at what part of the life cycle? So as soon as a mommy gets a diagnosis of Down syndrome, the child she's carrying has Down syndrome, she begins to come to the Playhouse to learn more about uh, this chromosomal condition. So the first so, step is educating the prospective parent. Correct. Mm -hmm. And then once the baby is born, we have programs first for the newborns through age three, and then there's a program for three to five-year-olds and all the way up through the adults who come to a program called Fantastic Friends. Now, this is really important, the whole idea of empowerment. Empowerment first through knowledge, but also in, that, in those early stages of childhood development, we know mm -hmm. that for all children, all children, including Down syndrome uh, children, those early educational experiences are so determinative of future. Talk about how that has changed over the years. So critical. I mean, so when the children come to Gigi's, I mean, we just see a child. And the, the expectation is that they have the same opportunity as any other child. Um, I guess the difference in the programs at Gigi's is that they are um, delivered in a way that children with Down syndrome learn best. So they're research-based, um, they're effective because they are geared specifically to the child and how that child learns best. So um, a lot of multi-sensory activities, um, just exposing them to everything um, that any other child would have the opportunity, but in a manner that they learn best, and in a smaller group, and in a one-to-one -one, uh, one -one interaction with them. Now you say that, that the, your techniques are science-informed. Let's mm -hmm. be a little bit more specific, because Down syndrome, basically, it, it creates certain strengths and also certain weaknesses. So mm -hmm. a child, as, as they are developing through Down syndrome, mm -hmm. they, their uh, learning capacity is, is there, it's rich, but it has a particular shape. Talk a little bit about that shape. Yes, yeah, so one of the greatest effects of Down syndrome is muscle tone. So our children tend to have uh, what's called hypotonia. Their muscle tone is a little bit, um, maybe not as strong as, a, as another child. And so that affects everything um, from their speech to their crawling, walking, um, all of that. And so that's one of the things that we're constantly working on is improving that muscle tone. So the little ones that come in and they're ages zero to eight, uh, 36 months. So we're focused on speech and language. We know that these muscles need strengthening. And so you might walk into their class, which is called LMNOP, um, and you might see them licking lollipops or blowing bubbles or doing things like that. And that's all aimed at strengthening those oral motor muscles to help them produce speech. So. And that's very important because it is like learning to walk as if you were walking through molasses. Right. Right. And, and, and so yes. we, we, we find our attitudes are 
that if the response to walking through molasses is to walk slow, more slowly, you think that that's an inevitability. Mm -hmm. But if instead you, you start thinking, okay, if you've got to walk through molasses, you better have strong legs. So mm -hmm. let's strengthen those legs. You're actually shifting right. the trajectory of that child. Yes. And that's what we keep talking about when the adults, the young adults and, and the older adults come to use our gym. And in trying to relate that to the families, for them to work out as if you and I were working out with sandbags strapped to us. That's mm -hmm. how difficult it is for them. So for them to get on that, on that bicycle or that treadmill or that elliptical and do 20, 30 minutes is as if you and I did it for two hours, it's so much harder, so much effort. And so we applaud them because they, they, don't, they don't quit, you know, they don't give up, they, they keep working towards that and we see the effect. And of course with that in particular, the goal is to um, prevent some other problems like um, obesity or diabetes or right. you know, joint pain and, and cardiovascular um, uh, issues. In terms of, of the, the other services you provide, we talked about uh, early childhood licking lollipops and strengthening certain muscles. Mm -hmm. As children age, what type of other services do you provide? Well, when you take a look at the, um, and, and again, Gigi's makes that lifelong commitment to these children and their families. So we're there for the whole, for the whole length, you know? And so um, the next program would be the, the Leaps and Bounds, which is three to five-year-olds. So that program is more focused on helping children make that transition into a classroom setting. Because a lot of times they go from being at home to being in the classroom. And that's a hard transition for any yes. child. And so um, that program aims at getting them used to that transition, coming and being with a group of children and knowing that story time is over. Now we're going to move into snack time and snack time is over. Now we're going to do an outdoor activity. So they learn to move from one activity to the other, knowing that it's going to be okay. Um, and again, every program, again, focus on that muscle tone. So fine motor activities, gross motor activities, lots of language. Um, with the little ones, we even begin to uh, work with them with sign language so that they have a way to communicate until those muscles are developed and that speech comes in. And so um, so it is with all the programs. And then as they get older, they have we have a program for four to six-year-olds and then for our teenagers and then our adults. Now here in El Paso, uh, our goal, hopefully within a year, is to expand from Gigi's Playhouse to GGU. So Gigi University is for our adults after they graduate from high school. And that program is more focused on career skills and job skills. So that they come in and they develop those skills and build a resume in hopes that from there they can uh, go out in the community and be employed. Now, post high school, Mm -hmm. um, when you are working on job skills, what type of job skills are, do you focus on? So computer skills, um, serving customers. Uh, we're hoping to expand into some health careers, whether it's a nurse's assistant, um, but primarily some sort of field where they are engaged and able to um, perform those activities independently. Um, one of the things that, that Gigi talks about is is um, educating the child, inspiring, and then believing in them. And so I think that's one of the things we, we um, do best is we believe in them. We believe in their potential. We believe in the gifts that they have to offer us. And I think um, as we talk about changing those perceptions, I think oftentimes it starts with the family and then it goes on to the schools and then the communities, as you say. So getting to the point of those opportunities becoming available as a community, I think is very much where most of us are at. I think um, there's a lot of information now early on for families. So um, that awareness and acceptance, I think, is quite strong. I think schools are, are moving more in that direction. And then the next piece is getting our communities, again, to, to, um, to really to accept and embrace our, our individuals. One of the things that, that has always been interesting to me uh, as we've been making this transition as a society is that we go through our own transformation. We initially think, uh, no, these children cannot do anything. Then we understand that we've been wrong and, and that we've been the limiting factor for these children. And then we provide some, some support and we say, okay, it can, uh, these children can only do repetitive tasks. And then we we see the art that is created yes. by children with Down syndrome and by adults with Down syndrome, 
and you and you find that the Amazing. creativity is just yeah. it, it, it just abounds. That is so true. And as you speak about about art, we provide art classes for the kids at the Playhouse. And you're absolutely right. I mean, the creativity and the work that they produce is amazing. I mean, they are so, they're such an inspiration because of what they're able to accomplish even in the face of adversity. They are just, uh, they're heroes in my eyes, you know, what they're able to do. Never give up. They never give up and they keep trying and they keep trying to always give their best of all. How many uh, people do you serve as clients? I'm not talking about the families because you also serve the families. Right. But, but, but as clients directly of, of all age groups, and, and how does your age groups break, break up? Gigi's Playhouse here in El Paso opened up just a little over two years ago. And in that short amount of time, we have reached over 400 individuals. And what is the age distribution? Probably more little ones and adults. Little ones and adults with, with the... Those are probably our largest group. groups, yeah. And, and that would make sense because the, the school age kids are in school and, and thankfully they're being included and integrated into more regular activities at school. So they're busy with that. So we see a lot of the little ones from prenatal diagnosis through three and it kind of drops off, still strong. And then adults for sure is one of the biggest populations we serve. Now Gigi's is one of a network of playhouses. Correct. Talk about the national network. So Gigi's was founded in Chicago by Nancy Gianni when she had her baby, Gigi, and that's where the name comes from, is, is Gigi Gianni, it was born in 2003. And Nancy's experience was very much like any of us who have a child with Down syndrome. Um, people were not congratulating her. In fact, they were offering condolences, and she felt like, wow, what does this mean for us? And so we certainly understand, you know, that that, that was her experience, and that's, we can identify with that because many of us also went through that. And so um, she felt like, gosh, I mean, she knew what Down syndrome was, but what was it really? What did it mean for, for her, her husband, her other children, and for this baby? And so at that point, uh, she made a vow to that newborn child that she was going to change the way the world viewed Down syndrome. And uh, the first playhouse opened in 2003. There are now over 33 playhouses across the country, and there's one in Mexico. And there are inquiries for hundreds more across the country and, and around the world. Maggie Morales Moody, thank you so much for sharing the work of Gigi's Playhouse with us. And thank you so much for your insights. Oh, well, thank you for having me. And I invite you to come visit the Playhouse, either here or any of the other 33 around the country. We'll do that. <laughs> we'll do that.